By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a battle for you between a pretty cool black and green deck that's called... Um, let me check it out here. I don't want to say it wrong. Incarnatron. Incarnatron. It's, oh man, it's really cool. Like in the deck deck, I can show you a really cool deck photo. And he's playing against uh, a more traditional deck, but an interesting deck that I've actually played in the past as well. Uh, it's a red and blue counter burn. So uh, these decks are going to battle against each other in today's episode. And they're playing according to the X points old school rules. Now this is a, a rule set where you basically have uh, seven points to spend on old school cards and certain cards uh, are taxed with that point system. For example, Mishra's Factory is worth one point. Now, if you'd like to know more about this specific rule set and actually maybe join this community, uh, check out the description below. There you will find a link to their Facebook page. So you can find a link to the Facebook page, click on there, and then you can you know check out what X points uh, is and maybe consider joining it yourself. It's quite interesting. It's run by a very friendly guy named Louis. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's a cool community and I'm happy uh, to show a game from their monthly uh, tournament. And before we go to the actual action, as always, we're going to start with the deck tech. I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. So we're gonna discuss that first. Now, if you wanna skip that, no worries. Check the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. And here we are going to start with the deck that I find the most interesting here, the black and green Incarnatron. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Yurian. So this deck is called Incarnatron. And I, I just think it's so cool. I love it when you know people are trying to do their own thing. And this is really an, an, an example of that. So good job, Yurian. Thank you for bringing this uh, deck to my attention. So it's black and it's green and you know, as you can see, there are some points, some numbers on specific cards. So that's that point system that I uh, told you about. So you can spend seven points in total. And as you can see, Mishra's Factory here is one point, Regrove is a point. And then we also have two him to Turex because you can pl uh, play with uh, Fallen Empires. In this format, I believe you also have um, uh, your Mana Burn here in this format. And you see Demonic Tutor is two points. Now, there's just a card I would love to talk about first. And that card is so, so interesting. And the card is called Reincarnation. And uh, Reincarnation is a card from Legends, two green and one to cast. Here you can see it on the screen. And it's really an example of, okay, read the card itself, but also check the Gatherer website to see the latest Oracle text and to kind of understand this card in the modern rule set, right? So the card text, I'm just gonna read it to you, the Oracle text that is, choose target creature, when that creature dies this turn, return a creature card from its owner's graveyard to the battlefield under the uh, control of that creature's owner, okay? And then there are a few rulings, uh, notes under the card. You know what, I'll just, I'll show it on the screen as well. And uh, the one that I'd like to talk about is the one on the bottom here, where it says the creature that's returned to the battlefield may be the same one uh, that was put into the graveyard, assuming it's still in the graveyard when the delayed trigger ability resolves. If so, it returns to the battlefield as a brand new creature. That means, because remember this is an instant, when an opponent, for example, would terror your creature or you would just attack in combat and it would die, before it dies, you can play the reincarnation, right before the damage, um, before the damage tap. So then your creature dies, then it goes to the graveyard, then the reincarnation ability triggers and it simply returns directly back into play. So this makes reincarnation a lot better because you don't need to have a creature in the graveyard already when you play out reincarnation you don't have to have a target in the graveyard the target can simply be the creature that you're assuming is going to die right and remember it's an instant so of course you'll do that when you already know that the damage is on the stack and you know that it's going to die so really really interesting again you know if you're reading these old school cards it really pays off to go to the gatherer website check the latest oracle text and check the ruling notes underneath that, like I've learned so much from that. So when we look at the rest of the deck, we see some more reanimator shenanigans, right? Uh, we see animate deaths, and of course the two reanimators themselves, and then we see the perfect targets for reanimator, and that's of course Triskelion, right? Triskelion being a 4-4 creature for six mana to cast. Basically, it's actually a 1-1 creature, just like the Tetravis, because they come into play with three plus one plus one tokens, uh, sorry, counters, 
And with the Triskelion, you can shoot off the arms to deal one damage to any target, but then you also lose one of the counters. So the cool thing about Trike is that it can actually kill itself. So you can deal some damage, then it can kill itself, and then you can get it back with Reincarnation or Animate Dead, and it comes back with those uh, counters again. So that works pretty nicely. And with Tetravus, what you can do, it comes into play as this 4-4 body, right? In your upkeep, you can take those plus one, plus one counters off, make little Tetravites, and you all of a sudden you have four 1-1 one, one flyers, and then if your main Tetravis body dies, you can get it back again with the Reincarnation or Animate Dead, and you get those counters again. So it's really kind of nice to recycle those cards because you simply get a lot of value. Now, what's also interesting in this uh, in this deck are the two Navanerals discs. They're kind of, I guess, a plan B, so he can reset everything, but he, of course, has Reincarnations and Animate Dead to get his good creatures back on the battlefield, or possibly Animate Dead, of course, a creature of the opponent, and then there's another card I really love in this deck. There are actually several, but another card I would love to point out here is Skull of Arm. So Skull of Arm, card from the dark. Um, you can tap it and you can get an enchantment back from your graveyard. Now, the interesting thing here is there are actually not that many enchantment targets, but the ones that are there, I guess, are really important for the deck. Like we've got the two anime deaths that he can target. Uh, we've got the single Sylvan Library here that he can target. And he can target Heart of the Wood. So Heart of the Wood... Not a really interesting card, uh, one green and one black, and you can sacrifice a forest to gain three lives. So basically what this card does, it buys you time, right? If you need extra time or if you simply have too many forests, you can trade them in for life. And if you have life, it's harder for your opponent to kill you. So that's why I always say life equals time. And also Dark Heart of the Wood uh, works very well with uh, Ashes to Ashes, another card here, because Ashes to Ashes, two black and one to cast from the dark. You don't see it often. I really love the art by Drew Tucker, by the way. It removes, removes, right? So not destroys, but removes two creatures from the game, but you do take five damage. And of course, with Sylvan, you take damage as well. But the nice thing is Dark Heart of the Wood can give you some life gain back. So I, I, I can see why he's decided to put Dark Heart of the Wood in this brew. Another interesting choice here is that he's playing with Untamed Wilds. So Untamed Wilds, one green and two. It's basically one of the only mana fixing cards in old school magic. So it's sorcery and it allows you to look up a target basic land in your deck, right? And, and I think, yeah, it also puts it into play untapped. So straight away, so you can use it um, the land, the turn you play it. So basically the casting cost, you could say it's only one green and one because that one mana, that one land that you look up, you can use it straight away because it comes into play untapped. Uh, why is it interesting that he's made this choice? Uh, because a lot of people um, decide to choose Ice Storm over Untamed Wilds, especially people who have access to uh, to a mana dork. And we see a mana dork here, of course, uh, in, the, in the form of those 1-1 uh, uh, elves uh, that make... Uh, Black Mana. So the Elves of Deep Shadow. Okay, that's that was the name that I was trying to find in my brain. So Elves of Deep Shadow. So usually what you would want to do here is, you know, you play out a forest, you play Elves of Deep Shadow, and then in turn two, you play out just another land, and then you can cast an Ice Storm and you can, you know, kind of win that tempo game. But of course, another option is to say, okay, I'm going to cast an Untamed Wild instead, and I'm going to get more mana, which in a way makes sense because there are a lot of mana hungry spells in this deck. So I can kind of understand the choice. Another nice synergy I'd like to point out is that between Sylvan Library and Untamed Wilds, they work together really well. Why? Because Untamed Wilds also has a shuffle effect. So if you've seen the top cards with Sylvan and you know there's not really anything good coming on, you can use your Untamed Wilds, look up a forest and shuffle your deck. And then the next turn you have three fresh cards to look at and to choose from. So in that regard, you know, that is also a nice little combination in this deck. So all in all, Yurian, I think you've built an awesome deck. You know, I'm really a big fan of this deck. I'm looking forward to see it in action. Now, let's go and take a look at the deck of your opponent, the Blue and Red Counterburn Brew. And here we see the deck of Rulf, and it is Blue and Red, and it is Counterburn. And this is one of those famous old school decks, right, that a lot of us know. And it's, in a way, it's pretty straightforward. Like if, if you're starting out in old school and you don't really know what to play and you have the cards for it, then these kind of decks are probably the decks that you're kind of going to test out. Um, I've also played some Counter Burn uh, kind of to test the waters and see how it plays. Obviously, uh, the deck is named after the Burn, which is mainly in red. You know, you've got Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, but don't forget the Psy Blasts. He's playing four of these who are also, who, who, what is of course a blue card that did not see a reprint after Unlimited. 
Uh, and then you've got the counter package, and he's playing with a lot of counter spells actually. He's playing with nine counter spells in this deck, which is kind of steep. Like the counter burn that I usually play myself has less counter spells. And I think the biggest difference here are the four power sinks that he's playing in his deck. So that's quite interesting. So I'm looking forward to see the power sinks play. It's beautiful to see them black bordered, by the way. Really nice colors on the mustard man. And uh, then when we look at his creature base, it's Flying Man, Surrender Pafrits, and then he plays with two Mishra's Factories. I'm just counting them with the creatures as well. And the interesting thing here is that the creatures are really cheap to cast, and that's kind of the strength of Counterburn. You know, you can do two things. You can play out a creature, and you can keep mana up to burn something away or to counter something in the turn of your opponent. But this deck, although it may seem like, oh, it's kind of easy to play, actually... It's kind of difficult at times to play this deck because you have to decide when are you going to burn something? When do you want to keep mana open to counter? For example, um, a Blood Moon can be absolutely devastating for your opponent, right? But it's one red and two. Does it mean that you're going to cast it whenever you get the chance? Or does it mean that you're going to keep it in hand and you're going to play it when you can have two blue open to protect it with a counter spell? Like those sort of questions uh, are things that you have to keep in your mind. And despite the fact that it kind of looks like an aggro build. There's actually much more control in this deck than you might expect. Because don't forget those nine counter spells in this deck. You know, it's really more about, you know, dropping a creature at the right time, protecting that creature with your counters, just dealing subtle points of damage every single turn, trying to get the damage through, and then finish it off with your huge burn package. Because, man, there is a lot of burn in here. We've got four chain lightnings, that's 12 damage. Four lightning bolts does 12 damage, or 24 damage. And then we've got the Psy Blasts. You know, Psy Blast is just an insanely strong card. Blue, instant, one blue and two, four damage to your opponent. And yes, you take two as well in the process. But that means if you have four of those, that equals 16 direct damage. Together with the 24 from the bolt and the chain, we're talking about 40 damage of direct damage. And I'm not even counting the Fireball. So this is insane i think one of these decks what i'm kind of missing but it's probably not in here because of the points and maybe because rulf you don't have that card and i don't own that card either so there's no shame in that but that is the time twister the reason time twister works really well in a deck like this is that you shuffle back all your direct damage cards and all your counter spells right so all those nice cheap spells that can be game decide decisive you can shuffle them back in with the time twister and because the cards that you have in this deck are pretty cheap to cast there's a big chance that you'll kind of run out of uh, um, steam, you know, later in the game. And then if you haven't won it, a Time Twister can make all the difference. But it's not in here. We do see a Brain Geyser and we do see a Wheel of Fortune. Those are two other cards that are great to kind of refill your hand and get back into action. So really nice traditional deck here to look at. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to see how this is going to play out. I have to say more from, you know... A traditional point of view, I would say the Counter Burn deck is a favorite. Um, but who knows? I mean, I'm really curious to see just this 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 work. You know, this black green deck and this this Counter Burn deck face off against each other. It's definitely a, a type of match that I've never seen before, and that says a lot because we have almost 300 games on the channel by now. So um, here are the decks. Now let's go to the games. Game number one, and we've got Yurian on the left with this black and green deck, and on the right, Rulf with his counter burn. And there we see a basic forest, and there's a good start by Rulf. Early pressure here with that flying man. Let's see what the black and green player can do. There's a dark heart of the wood, so he can sack a forest to gain three life. Not you know, going to have a big influence yet on the game. There's this second blue, so that means that Rulf can kind of, you know, have counter capability open. Attacking here for one. And Yurian dropping to 19. Let's see what he can do. There is another forest. And just passing turn here. The good news, at least, for uh, Yurian is that Rulf doesn't have unstable mutations in the deck, so it's not that kind of deck. It's not the blue aggro where you just put an unstable on and you keep going and going. So uh, there's not too much damage here. There we see a safe haven, a card we didn't discuss. Quite a nice card from the dark. Ooh, but look at Rulf putting more pressure on the board here, deciding uh, not to keep counter spells open, just going for it. And why not? There's not a lot of pressure yet. So Surrender Pafrit hits the board. That means next turn he can deal four damage in the air. There's an Elves of Deep Shadow. It looks like Yurian cannot really do anything about the, uh, the pressure here from Rulf taking a damage from his own Surrender, by the way. 
There is a City of Brass. Finally, he's got access to red mana. So now he also has Burn. Tacking here for four. Things are looking bad for Yurian. He will need to start doing something here. Dropping to 13. Remember, Rulf has tons and tons of Burn in his deck as well. There we see a Swamp. What can he do? Tapping two black and a green. Okay, this is pretty cool. Royal Assassin. Hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting... Okay, there's a Power Sink. I wanted to say I'm expecting a Counter Spell or a Burn Spell. And um, he's using it fully. And I believe playing Power Sink for two should be enough because the Save Haven doesn't tap for mana. What Save Haven does, you can pay, pay a two and tap and put uh, your creature, one of your creatures, into the Save Haven. And then during your upkeep, you can sacrifice your Save Haven. Um, and then um, the creature comes back, but you can only do that during your upkeep. So they're having some discussion, it seems. He's playing Power Sync for two. And uh, I mean, he can actually... I think he can actually pay the mana, right? With Elves of Deep Shadow, if he plays Power Sync for two, or am I missing something? And I think what they're discussing is if you were forced to tap all your mana, and that's not the case, you're forced to tap your lands. So he doesn't have to tap the Elves of Deep Shadow. So now he attacks with Elves of Deep Shadow. That's one point of damage here for Rulf. So he's going to drop to 18. I mean, things are really looking up for uh, for Rulf. You know, he, Royal Assassin taking care of that. That was a great step towards winning that first game. He's probably going to swing in for four exactly. So we see uh, Yurian dropping to nine here. It's going to be difficult for him uh, to get back from this. Paying four, there's a Brain Geyser. And remember, he's keeping those two blue open for a reason. He plays with four counter spells and two mana drain, or sorry, one mana drain, of course, because it's restricted. And also with four power sinks, and he's only played out one. So, so much control here from the side of Rulf. And Yurian needs to do something, or else his first game is done and dusted. And we can continue to game number two. Tapping, okay, anime dead. That is not too shabby. Getting back the Royal and no counter spell here, it looks like from Rulf. Rulf attacking for one. If he can keep the Royal Assassin alive, and what's gonna be interesting is if Rulf is gonna play Burn on it, we can actually see Yurian use Save Haven. I'm looking forward to that. It's a card you don't see often, so it's really cool to see it in play. There's an attack of four, so he's dropping to five. There's a Lightning Bolt. Okay, Chain Lightning. On his life total, or on, ah, unfortunately on the life total, which is probably the best play. Yeah, there's a side blast. Okay, okay. I was really hoping, oh, of course he's sacking. He's got Dark Heart of the Wood. Okay, I forgot about that card. He's got Dark Heart of the Wood. There's a Lightning Bolt, another Forest Gone. Oh man, that's so funny. So he's gonna stick on one, but look at his Lance. Remember, he's got Elves of Deep Shadow. If he taps that, for a black, he dies as well. So there's very little chance of Yurian to survive this, but I have to give props here for uh, for staying alive this long against uh, such a burn deck. What can he do really? Just attack for one, I guess, with the elves. That's all he can do. And uh, he's gonna kill one of the creatures. If he can get rid of, ah, he's gotta get rid of both flying men. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Very one-sided game one. And hopefully in game two, Yurian, um, we get to see more of Yurian's deck. That would be kind of sweet because it's really, really an interesting brew. Okay, so we'll let these players sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. And here we go. And I really hope that we're going to see more of the deck of Yurian. You know, the black and the green. There are just so many interesting cards in there. So let's hope that he can, uh, he can give us a proper game here in game number two. There's an island and Rulf playing, at least not a creature, but he is playing a soul ring. So again, a pretty good turn one for him. Nice response here by Yurian playing to crumble. So that's a life there. Going to 21 because of the crumble and playing a maze of if. So those mazes can actually work kind of nice against the uh, surrender Fritz of Rulf. There we see a volcanic passing turn, probably to keep counter magic open. And ooh, look at that. It looks like Yurian's kind of stuck on land here, not finding a land drop. That's unfortunate. There we see a chain lightning. So now he's going to play the direct damage game. Remember, Rulf has four chains, four bolts, and four side blasts. So he could definitely burn you, de burn you down to the ground. There we see a Sylvan library here. Hopefully that Sylvan can get him some lands. 
There is a City of Brass here by Rulf. He's not playing a creature out yet. Of course, he's also looking at that Maze of If. I mean, why would you play, for example, Surrender Profit now with your opponent with that Maze? And there we see a land drop from Yurian. Looking at his cards. He hasn't really been able to put any pressure on in game one. Hopefully that changes now in game number two. And Rulf is off to a slower start at least. Dropping another island and passing turn. I think this longer... You know, this longer game scenario, I think, is, is slightly better for uh, for Yuria because he wants to do, just do more, like, shenanigans. There we see an Untamed Wild, so he's going to look up a basic land. Really nice art on this card, by the way, by uh, Nene Thomas. She also made the art for Hercules Recall. Very talented artist. There we see a Swamp coming into play. And it looks like, oh, he's going to animate and he's going to attack. He's going to play aggressively. I'm really expecting a bolt here. Yeah, there's a lightning bolt. I think the idea of Yurian is, you know what? If he's going to bolt it, at least it's not three damage to the face. So I might as well do it. And remember, uh, Yurian is playing with four Triskelions and with the Tetravis. So he really wants to get the six mana quickly. Well, quickly, as fast as he can, let me put it that way. Because he doesn't have a lot of mana ramp in his deck. Perhaps his deck would benefit from some Felwer Stones, now that I think about it. And Rulf just dropping more and more lands. And also for Rulf, it's not bad to go into that more mid-game, late-game, because he'll just draw into Burn and kind of burn it out. Okay, here we see a Triskelion, and there is a Counterspell. Yurian kind of knows it, like he's already... He was putting the dice on it, but he kind of knew this is going to be, uh, be countered away. And this is kind of the difficult thing about playing against uh, Counter Burn, especially the way uh, Rulf made it, you know, playing four Counter Spells, a Mana Drain, and four Power Sinks. There we see a Trike. I'm expecting another Counter as well. Yeah, there's a Power Sink of just of one because he's all tapped out. So this is kind of easy for Rulf now to kind of let his opponent try things and then counter it away. There's a Flying Man. Not really a problem here because of that Maze of If. But Rulf also knows I've got, you know, he's got so much Burn. He can just Burn Yurian out and... I'm kind of expecting that to happen, but we'll have to see. There's another Triskelion. Wow. He's drawing really nicely. Of course, that Sylvan helps. So he's got a 4-4. He can now kill the Flying Man whenever he wants to. Let's see what Rule's going to do. Tapping 5. Is he going to play a Fireball for 4? Fireball for 4 on the Trike. What else is he going to do? Taking 3 damage. The thing is with the Fireball, you have to spread it evenly. So I think what he's doing now is actually not possible. Because what you have to do, for example, um, if you do a Fireball for, let's say, six, then you've got to pay one in between if you want to choose another target. And the target, uh, the damage is divided equally over the two targets. But okay, it's, it's been played now, so there's another Triskelion, which is kind of nice because Rulf was tapped out, so another 4-4. There's a Surrender, which is actually not that bad. There's a Chain Lightning on Yurian's life total going to 12. There's a Wheel of Fortune! Nice! I love it. I love it, Rulf. Really nice. Oh, a Terror there! That Terror would have been kind of helpful. I wonder uh, what Yurian's going to do next turn. If he's going to attack with the Triskelion. There's the 1-1 one, one Flyer, of course, using the Maze to send it back. And Rulf's life total is on 13, by the way. And Yurian's life total is on 12. Let's see what uh, Yurian can do. This is an interesting game. Sec uh, the second game is definitely more interesting than the first game. There we see a Pendlehaven. Also handy once the trike is a 1-1, one, because one, then you can make it into a 2-3 a with the Pendlehaven. Tapping 6. Okay, we see another trike. And he's got one land untapped for a possible power sink. And there's a Paralyze. Oh, I'm liking this more and more. So he's playing a Paralyze on the Serenip, so that gets tapped immediately. Now he can swing in for 4. Why not? Exactly, go for it. I wonder what he's going to do. I mean, I think the Mistress Factory has Summoning Sickness, so if he animates the Factory, it cannot pump itself, so he's probably going to take damage here. That would mean he's going to drop to 9. I 
I wonder what's going to happen. It looks like they're kind of discussing the scenarios. The thing is, if you animate Mishra's factory now, it's still a summoning sickness, so it can't pump itself. So if, if I were Rulf, I would just take the damage here. Yeah, go to nine, I think. It's not ideal, because remember, Yurian has two Triskelions on the board that equals six direct damage. So that means he's basically he's on three. He's taking a damage from his own Surrender, going to eight. So technically he's on, on two now. He's paying the mana to untap his Surrender. And there is another Volcanic Island. Oh man, this is exciting. Okay, playing a Chaos Orb, that can help. Is he going to flip the maze or is he going to flip a trike? That's another interesting uh, decision for him to make. Rulf being, oh sorry, Yurian being tapped out. So, you know, Rulf doesn't have to worry for a, uh, a crumble upon activation. Using City of Brass, that's interesting. He's flipping, not sure on what he flips, so we'll just have to wait. And... Did he miss? I think he missed. It's kind of hard because, of course, we don't hear the players here, but I think he missed. And look at that life total. I think Rulf, because he took a damage from his own city, now he's going to take another damage. Oh, he's going to go so low. He's on, he's on six. He's on six. He did kill one of the Triskelions, but he's on six. If he can draw into maybe another Paralyze... Paralyze the Surrender and attack. Then he's kind of forcing Rulf to jump it. He's going to attack here with the... Oh, he's not going to attack with the 4-4, is he? Looks like that flip... No, it didn't hit because we still have the mace. So that, that's what I mean. He can just attack and then use the mace if he wants to. There we see a terror. Okay, this is really good news here. I think those terrors, they came in from the sideboard. There's an attack. He has to block. He has no choice. If he's not going to block this... He's going to drop to two and he'll be killed. So there we see the activation. He's going to go to five. He's going to jump. I'm not really sure what's happening here. And there, oh, there's reincarnation. That's why he's doing this. Okay, now I understand. Double reincarnation. Okay, <laughs> that's kind of sweet. So winning it on reincarnation, man. Yurian, woo, you're the man. I love it. I love it. This was really nice to see here in game number two and uh, really sweet win here by uh, by Yurian with the reincarnations and uh, he was lucky, he was lucky, he found the cards he needed but you need a little bit of luck in Magic especially when you're playing these type of decks. Well done uh, Yurian and it's a 1-1 which is nice, that means we're going to get a game number three. Game number three, here we go, 1-1. That means that Rulf is probably on the play here starting with an island. Passing turn. Let's see what Yurian can do here. There's a strip mine quickly taking care of that basic island. And passing turn here. Another basic for Rulf playing Flying Man and pass. There's a swamp and there's a Sylvan. That's pretty good actually for Yurian. He can start uh, going through his deck, finding the ingredients that he need. Ooh, this is a good start for Rulf for getting that Serendip out as quickly as he did. There we see Yurian looking at the top three. Maybe he can find a Terror playing Untamed Wild. So this is kind of the synergy I talked about in the deck deck, Sylvan Library and Untamed Wilds, because now Yurian gets to shuffle up his deck again, which is kind of nice. And he gets to see three fresh new cards next turn. Ooh, this is kind of tough, that Chaos Orb. And of course, Rulf swinging in for four here. It's looking already kind of looking difficult for Yurian. Already being on 15, he needs an answer to that Surrender quickly. And we look at Rulf's uh, mana base, by the way. He is missing a red source. There we see Elf of Deep Shadow. Ashes to Ashes, sweet! Liking this, five damage, of course, uh, Yurian is taking. That is the bad news, and he is playing against Burn. Oh, no, Power Sink. That's the worst. That is the worst, because I believe the five damage is part of the casting cost. Oh, he's actually not playing it? Okay, that's kind of... He, oh, he was tapped out. He wasn't able to cast it, I guess. 
Anyway, it resolves. There was five damage for Yuri and he's dropping to 10. You know, that's a big downside of the Ashes to Ashes, especially when you're playing against a burn deck. But at least the two flying threats are gone. And it's really nice to see a card like Ashes to Ashes uh, seeing some play. Let's see what Yurian can do here. Looking at his top three. Tapping four. Ooh, an Urnum. I'm expecting a... Okay, a Counterspell here. Yeah, there is a Power Sink. And there's the attack by the Elf. So Ruf going to drop to 18. The question now is can Ruf find... A red source to start uh, playing some burn on Yurian. And for Yurian, of course, it's kind of difficult as well because, you know, he's got the Sylvan. With Sylvan, you can draw an extra card if you want to, but then you have to pay four life, which is something he's probably not going to do because he's already on 10. So that seems highly unlikely. There's a Crumble. I mean, this is an interesting choice. He could have waited upon activation and then Crumble. There goes to Sylvan. And what is he going to do now? Playing another Sylvan, perhaps? Not sure how many he had in his deck. I thought only one. There's an enemy dead. There is a counter spell. And maybe, maybe... Um... Okay, there's a Demonic Tutor. Well played here by Yurian, probably. Wanting to get that counter spell out of the hand of Rulf. And what I wanted to say is maybe he did it on purpose, the way he played the Crumble, that he wanted Rulf to use that extra mana to activate uh, the Chaos Orb so that he couldn't be power synced. That could be a reason perhaps for playing that sequence. There is another blue by Rulf, still cannot find any red sources. There is Dark Heart of the Wood. Will we see a counter spell of this? There is a power sync, so he's gonna have to tap his two lands. Dark Heart's gone. Looks like he's a bit in doubt, but that's the way it's supposed to be played. So Dark Heart's gone. Attacking for one. Rulf's going to drop to 17. Yurian is on nine at the moment. If Rulf can find, I don't know, a couple of side blasts and some burn, you know, and a red source, of course, to play his bolts or chains, then, then it could be over fairly quickly. But as long as he can't, Yurian still has a fighting chance here. Attacking, dealing it down. Oh, he's actually tapping it for a mana. That means a Triskelion or a Tetravus. Playing a Tetravus, will we see a counter spell by Rulf? It's kind of difficult because we can't see how many cards he has in hand. And there is a Psy Blast on the life total of Yurian. Yurian dropping to four and another Psy Blast. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's it. Well done, Rulf. Yeah, that's kind of the strength, of course, of Counter Burn. Um, there's just so much direct damage in the deck. And that's it. That's the game. And uh, well played, I had to say. You know, Rulf, of course, was a strong favorite. But it was really cool, Yurian, uh, to see your deck in action. Let's take another look at the deck. Here we see the deck picture. It's, uh, it's really sweet to see these kind of decks. And I really enjoy featuring them on the channel. And, of course, let's take a look at the beautiful classical counter burn deck of Rulf as well. Congratulations Rulf on winning this one. And this um, match was played in the X Point uh, monthly tournament. And if you're interested in that, if you wanna join it, if you like what you see, if you like playing old school with some kind of point system, then this is definitely um, you know worth to check out. You can find a link to their Facebook page in the description below and then you can have a look on the page and you know what you can join if you want to you can join their monthly league it's free for everybody um so it's really great and the organizer louis he's really an open-minded relaxed cool kind of guy so if you're into that check the description below you know you can find them on facebook for now i would like to thank you for watching another match right here on timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and if you want to support the channel, there are a few really simple things that you can do. First off, you can like this video, hit that thumbs up button. It helps a lot. Another thing you can do is leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the decks. What do you think of X points as a format? You know, what do you think of a point system in old school in general? Let me know in the comments below or just, you know, whatever, you know, place in, place in comment. It just helps the channel grow. Talking about that, you can also become a subscriber. So if you're not a sub yet, hit that subscribe button. That helps a lot. 
And the last thing that you can do, or maybe the first thing that you can do, is you can also sponsor this channel financially to help me keep Timmy Talks in the air. How can you do that? It's quite simple. There's a info card popping up right now. Click on that info card that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And there you can see uh, how you can support the channel financially. It already starts with $1. And one of the great things about supporting Timmy Talks is that your name will be in the end scroll. Isn't that fantastic? Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee.